All right. Joining us now, CNN senior political commentator, former Republican senator from the state of Pennsylvania, Rick Santorum. Senator, thanks so much for being with us. I want to do kind of a lightning round here because there's a lot of issues okay. I want to cover with you. First of all, Scott Pruitt, EPA administrator, 13, 14 investigations now, ethical investigations going on into him. Laura Ingram, conservative thinker, tweeted, Pruitt is the swamp, drain it. What do you think? Yeah, I, you know, a, a couple of things. Uh, first off, uh, the the drip, drip, drip of ethical scandals is getting a little bit louder. It's Chinese water torture that's being drummed, uh, dropped on the on the on the Trump administration. Uh, so that's I think Laura's right in that respect. The other thing is, you know, what what Scott Pruitt's supposed to do is is really the the, mm -hmm. the president's bidding, and in one area, uh, he's really departed from that, and and he's caused the ire of a lot of Trump-based voters, particularly in the Midwest, and that's on the ethanol issue. Not, I know that well because I, along with Jim Talbot, I had a group up that really goes out and helps to promote ethanol, but I can tell you I'm hearing it loudly and clearly that the base mm -hmm. who is really getting hurt right now, rural America, by, by, by some of these mm -hmm. trade decisions, is really upset about these Senator. ethanol decisions that's coming out of, the, out, of, out of the EPA. If it's a drip, 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 it's the kind of drip, drip, <clears throat> drip that comes out of a fire hose or a tidal wave. Let me just say that in terms of the scandals right now. And as the clash would say, my real question to you is, should he stay or should he go? The president has the decision to make. But, should he stay or should he go? Yeah, look, I, I think at, at this point the president needs to take another look. I, I, I think he's 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 sort of blown off a lot of these things, but I think if you put the, the policy and and the scandal together and how it's affecting him and and, uh, and his, the electoral chances for Republicans in 2018 and him in 2020, I think he has to uh, to, to do an, a second look. Let's so it's it hurting the president is what you're saying. <clears throat> he is. OK. I want to ask you about the Supreme Court, uh, and, and I want you to help me figure out the right way to think about this. Amy Coney Barrett, 46 years old, a rock star in some conservative circles yeah. here, someone who was at Notre Dame for a long time, just confirmed to the appeals court, hasn't been there very long. But one of the issues that came up in her confirmation process was her faith. She is a devout Catholic. Dianne Feinstein was seen, I think, as being somewhat inappropriate when she said to Coney Barrett, the dogma lives loudly within you. Is there any appropriate way to talk about religion and faith in a confirmation hearing or with a prospective justice? No, I don't think there is, only because everybody has a set of values and principles. Some are based in biblical principles, some are based in Quranic principles, some are based in, 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 the, in the Talmud. And the, that those are all legitimate. And by the way, some people have principles that are not based in faith at all. We don't ask people about that. If you're if you're an atheist, we don't say, well, you know what, you know, where, what is your dogma? Uh, people people are allowed to have their faith interests. Well, you need to look at their records. You need to look at what what they how they how they act in, a, in, in jurisprudence. Would you vote to confirm an atheist to the court? I think I've talked about atheism with you before. You've told me you're skeptical of people who are atheists. I think you would want to know. If a nominee was an I would, atheist, I would. Yeah, I, I, I would. I would want to know. Obviously, all of their background, but I want. But when it comes to a vote on someone, you mm -hmm. look at their jurisprudence and you look at their record and you look at how they've applied principles of constitutional yes. of constitutional law. That's that's the focus. And you would want to know, I think, if there was a devout Muslim who was a nominee, if their faith in Islam would supersede their legal thinking. Correct. Again, I think that would be reflected in, in, their, in their body of work. And so, yes, I mean, you, you certainly would look at that in context. Okay, how is, how is their faith potentially coming through? But, you know, I think it's, it's important to understand that people who of, of little faith uh, or, you know, or who are atheists or people who are not particularly religious don't get asked these questions. They, they really just sort of assume that, you know, that's not an important part of their life. Well, what is? And that's really not never been asked is, you know, everybody has a set of guiding principles. Hers happens to be her Catholic faith. That's, by, by the way, very well known and very public yes. about what she, uh, what the church teaches. Whereas a lot of people who come before these 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 committees, you have no idea what their faith uh, or, or 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 system of beliefs sure. that they're Im infusing. So I think actually having someone with a fairly clear and public record of faith is actually uh, a little cleaner than what uh, the, than than the rest of these nominees that uh, that don't have that. I want to ask you uh, about the poisoning right now that took place in the United Kingdom. There are a couple, this British couple right now, poisoned by the same nerve agent that affected that 
former Russian agent and his daughter back in April. It does appear to be Novichok, which is a nerve agent only manufactured by Russia, also the former Soviet Union right now. How concerned mm -hmm. are you about this? Even if this is only a residual from the last attack, this would mean four people on British soil poisoned by an action that intelligence agencies around the world believe was ordered by the Russian government. Look, uh, you know, I, I, I appreciate what the president's doing and meeting with, with Putin, and I, and I respect you know, reaching out and, and talking to, uh, to, to folks who are important geopolitically. Uh, but we can make no mistake that Vladimir Putin is a, is a thug. Vladimir Putin is an enemy of the United States. He is an enemy of democracy. He is the enemy of the West. And we have to, we have to go into these, uh, these, these conversations with that understanding Senator, that this do, is a, this is a bad belief? actor on the world. Do you, have you ever heard the president say that Vladimir Putin is an enemy of the United States, that he's a bad actor around the world? I haven't. I, I haven't heard the president say that, but you know we're we're sort of early, I, I would look at it that the president is early in his administration, still working through you know how he's going to to deal with with mm -hmm. different countries. You saw I, you saw something quite unusual with respect to North Korea and the way the president has approached it. Uh, he has been unorthodox. He is he is being unorthodox with with respect to the Russians. I think we've seen a lot of benefits of that, uh, but I th the the point is we're still early in this process. We want to see the fruit. Of some of these of these decisions, uh, and let's let's wait and see how the president does uh, in Helsinki. Let's let's wait mm -hmm. to see what comes out of this. But you know what's said publicly and what's said privately may be two very different things. And I, at least I hope, in the case of this president, that he makes it very clear to Vladimir Putin uh, that the United States is not going to not going to tolerate this type of behavior. You, you say you hope. Do you have any confidence? And I only have time for a yes or no question. Do you have confidence? In fact, yeah, that he will. Yeah, I do. I, look, I, I I don't think the president's shy at all about confronting people when. Mm -hmm. uh, when people are doing things against the interest of our country well, in the West. I, I will say, as far as election meddling, all he has said is that Russia believes, Putin has said that he doesn't believe that Russia meddled in the election. That doesn't seem to me being firm, but we will see what happens in Helsinki. Yeah, I think that's, that's, a, a, that's a little difference because it gets into the whole personal aspect of whether he's a legitimate president. Well, I, I just it, think it gets that, into whether that, or not he thinks that Russia a is a bad actor. It gets into whether he thinks Russia is a bad actor or not. Again, we will see what happens in Helsinki. Senator Santorum, great to have you with us. Thanks. You bet. Allison. Thank you. All right.